Hello, fairly secret music people. This is David, your host, and today I am going to talk about hair metal. This is a lot of hair metal that wasn't like Dokken or Warrant or Poison or Motley Crue. This is stuff that didn't really get a lot of recognition in the United States at the time it was released except for maybe one band uh, who ended up being a kind of a super group in Japan. Uh, the recognition also I would like to give is, this is a shirt by Dan Dittmer. Dan Dittmer is a tattoo artist at Electric Dragonland Tattoos in Hopkins, Minnesota. Uh, he specializes in horror, fantasy, and sci-fi tattoos. And he kind of looks like me. We could be twins. You got to trust that face. So, what is my first band? This is the band, Lion. This was a band formed by Kale Swan and Doug Aldrich. Kale Swan was in a band called Titan. He's from Scotland. He's got a baritone voice. He sounds a little different than most of the singers in this genre at the time at least and Titan released a, released it released one album called Rough Justice that is an unfortunate title uh I have listened to most of that and it's pretty decent not quite the same not what I was looking for uh because Lion I love and this album in particular this album starts really strong with Fatal Attraction. You have Armed and Dangerous. Also, it's it, by the way, it's called Dangerous Attraction. Um, Hard and Heavy is a little bit kind of a eh, cringer with the lyrics. Uh, I'll give you every inch of love I got. I'm coming hard and heavy are the lyrics. So... Uh, you know, they, they weren't without their faults. By the way, Jerry Best was the bass player. Mark Edwards was the drummer. He played in a band called Steeler with a guy named Ron Keel and a guitarist, I think his name was Ingve Malmsteen or something like that. This album starts out pretty decent and stays consistent, even hard and heavy, except for that silly little line. But it ends with three just amazing songs, In the Name of Love, After the Fire, and Shout It Out. Most songs, or sorry, most albums don't end with the best three songs, but that's awesome because it makes me want to listen to this whole album all over again. Their follow-up wasn't quite as good. It had some r decent tracks on it. These standout track, I should say, is called Come On. That sounded a lot like what was on the first album. They did a, a cover song called Lock Up Your Daughters, and that was pretty darn good. Uh, I'm not as familiar with this album, but I want to just keep on showing you, I want to show you everything that uh, each band has, just so you know kind of what you're getting into if you decide to get into some of these bands. Uh, their follow-up band with Kale and Doug. Oh, by the way, if you think Lion sounds familiar, it's because they did the theme song to the Transformers cartoon. I've played this in the store a lot, and people are like, where do I know this band from? And I mentioned the uh, Transformers theme song, and they're like, yes, that's it. So they did a band called bad mood rising and this is the main cover but sometimes i see it like this depending on which version you're getting let me kind of move this over here um i actually like that way better this album is pretty decent it doesn't have as many standout tracks uh, i'm not quite as familiar with this at this time it was just kale and doug uh, that were the f the main two guys. Uh, Doug was, I believe, in House of Lords at this time, so he got 
Ken Mary on drums and Chuck Wright on bass to do the be the rhythm section. After that, they got two guys. One was from Bangalore Choir and one was from Hurricane Alice named uh, Ian Mayo on bass and Jackie Ramos on drums. And they were in the band from this album on. And this album is actually pretty damn good. The one track I will tell you if you don't like this track uh there's no you're not gonna like the rest dangerous game is the one to listen to he has the line dance with the devil in the pale moonlight which i believe was a line from the f second first or second batman movie uh it's a great album that is my favorite track on the whole album. But their third and final album, and again, this band actually became somewhat of uh, superstars in Japan, where all of these are released. These are kind of harder to find. Uh, there was a box set that had, I think, two additional tracks at the end of each album. That box set is impossible to find. I owned it. I stupidly got rid of it, sold it to my friend Rob. He didn't want to part with it, so I got the single discs, which I actually wanted more anyway because they have all the lyrics and the liner notes, um, what little liner notes there are, and most of them are in Japanese. But this is the album where they kind of changed. This one came out in... Uh, 1995, and 1995 kind of influenced how this album sounded. That was the, you know, the mid to late period of all the grunge stuff that was happening, and although it doesn't sound grungy, you can hear elements of it, or really, like, the heavier rock. There's still a lot of elements of... Lion, enough for me to absolutely love. And I actually love this album more than the first one or the Angel City or Amgel City, as it says on the spine. Uh, Belligerent Stance and Monkey are two of the standout tracks on this album. Well worth the price of admission. Now... This is a band that we accidentally found. It was either on Z-Rock, which was a Texas radio station that broadcast to Minnesota on AM, or one of the stations had maybe a metal hour or two. And Brighton Rock are a band from Canada they had this first album called Young, Wild, and Free, and this is the best out of the three. The other two were called uh, Take a Deep Breath uh, and Love Machine. Mr. McGee, Gerald McGee, the singer, has a very unique voice. It's almost kind of in that Stephen Percy vein, but with a little more control, a little more mel melody going on, this band did two things really well. They did the really rocking stuff and the really um, ballady stuff. My friend Rob loves the ballads. I love the rocking stuff. There is a song that's kind of like a, a in-between that is fantastic. That is called... Um, can't wait for the... No, Change of Heart, sorry. Uh, Change of Heart has a part where he sings and baby, it's all a game and he's just screaming it, but it's so melodic. You, you just gotta love it. This band also, uh, I want to point out that I believe their drummer had Judge Dread pants on and I always thought that was interesting uh because Judge Dredd were a, was a British or is a British comic 
And it was just kind of an odd thing. Most people remember Judge Dredd through, like, Anthrax or something like that if you found out about Judge Dredd through music. This is their second album. Pretty good, but I will be the first one to admit I am not quite as familiar with these albums. Young, Wild, and Free was where it is at. So, whoops, that brings me to another band called Icon. Icon were a band that I knew about long before I actually got anything by them. I believe I had this on vinyl. I didn't get it the first time I saw it. Uh, my brother and I used to go to a record store called OR Folk Jokopus, and that actually changed hands and then is now closed. But this album I saw at the... Uh, the record store and I remember looking at the band photo and thinking oh this is gonna be awesome would I would I think that now probably not but this album cover just really caught my eye uh, I'm not quite as familiar with this one because I just got it recently finally again on on CD or not uh, not again on CD, finally for the first time on CD, but I had it on vinyl, and it's got some really good songs on it, like um, like Rock On Through the Night, uh, On Your Feet, and, oh, what was the other one? World War. Those songs are pretty good standout tracks, but I am so much more familiar with this album. Uh, this album was kind of a concept album. You had Naked Eyes, Missing, or, sorry, Naked Eyes, Missing, and Danger Calling were the first three songs, and they all kind of had this theme of this crime story happening. And later on, I believe Frozen Tears was kind of a f late follow-up part of that story. I don't know why they would have split it up. But this, song, this album is way more melodic, less aggressive than the first one, and just has way better songwriting. I believe Bob Halligan Jr. helped co-write a lot of the songs. Eddie Kramer produced it, and I believe he produced uh, Jimi Hendrix stuff. Stephen Clifford, the singer left the band after this for personal reasons. I believe he found God and decided he couldn't be in a rock and roll band anymore, or he had to be in a Christian rock band. Uh, I wonder what they could have done had they toured behind this with Stephen Clifford and got some radio play. I think this could have been a really big album, at least the equivalent to like a Dokken or well, a Dokken. Um, the only bad track on this album is rock my radio, which was written by Mike Varney and Mike Varney actually discovered the band. He had this article or, uh, like a guitar finder thing in Guitar Player Magazine where it had amateur guitarists. Most of them were shredders. He had the record company Shrapnel Records, which had Racer X and Vinnie Moore and Tony McAlpine. He didn't put their first album on out. He actually sold the album to, I think it was Columbia or a Capitol. So they never were on Shrapnel, but he still did a song called uh, Rock My Radio on this album. And it is actually the weak point on this whole album. Uh, Naked Eyes, Missing, Danger Calling, Frozen Tears, those are the standout tracks. And as I've told you in other videos, I don't play samples of songs because I don't want to deal with copyright stuff and having things blocked and, and taken down. But you can find every one of these albums on YouTube or 
You could go to Discogs or Amazon and buy them. The hardest one to get on Amazon will be the Bad Moon Rising stuff. But most of this stuff is pretty easy to find on Discogs or eBay also. This band, Seduce, they were in a movie called The Decline of a Western Civilization II, The Metal Years. And I don't remember exactly because it's been a while. I don't remember how much they were featured in that. This is an album that I haven't listened to a lot of. It was put out by somebody they knew, and I think I picked it up around, uh, gee, like 2003 or 2004 at a record convention in Minneapolis. This guy who knew the band was selling them, and... I thought, well, I, I I love this band. I love the the second album they did because this, I guess, was their first album. They released this album called uh, Too Much Ain't Enough. And this album is pretty much a 100% album. There is no bad song on this. Uh, they released a song called Anytime or Place, and in, what year was this, 1988, uh, it got some heavy rope, uh, radio play in Minneapolis. And I thought the song was called Laser Race just because of the way they sang it. The anytime a place. And, you know, hearing it from far away on the radio at work. It just sounded like a laser race for some reason. So I finally tracked down who it was, bought it on cassette. I've had it on vinyl, and now I have it on CD. Um, there's a song called Empty Arms, which is one of the best ballads of this genre. It, it gets a little heavy. I, I, you could call it a power ballad almost. Uh, the, the singing is amazing. It's a, they are a three-piece. They are a power trio. Um, there's 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 one song called Crash Landing, and at the time, I loved double bass, so I was excited because he does a lot of double bass on that. But this is, song isn't about those silly little tricks and stuff. This song is a... This album, I should say. This album is about just great songwriting, and they were amazing at it. I wish they did a follow-up, but this way, I know they went out on a high note. This band is another band uh, that had members who were also featured in Decline of Western Civilization Part Two, The Metal Years. Uh, this guy is Randy O. He was in a band called Odin, and in that movie, he said something to the effect of if he didn't make it in music, that he would kill himself. Well, he is still alive, and honestly, I think this album was fantastic. He made it. It was on Atlantic. Uh, this also has Jeff Duncan, uh, who went on to be in Armored Saint, I loved this guy. Well, I didn't love this guy. I thought he was super cool because his name was Dorian. I wanted, probably wanted to change my name to Dorian because I thought that name was cool. I was a weird kid, you know. Uh, the feel of this album is kind of sleazy, kind of filthy. Uh, there's there's this weird honesty in this album that lets out a lot of emotion. Sometimes this album can be kind of funny. It's it's weird. It's almost a sad album, but from a, a sleazy standpoint, just listen to it. I think you'll like it. His voice is a very acquired taste. He kind of sounds like the singer from Bang Tango, if you know who that is. They did a Someone Like You as their hit song. 
And uh, Randy O actually kind of had lightning in the bottle for this album. I love it. I think it's great. My last album to tell you about is White Tiger. So White Tiger were a band that had one album. I believe they had some demos, but this guy, Mark St. John, was originally in Kiss for the Animal Eyes album. And I loved that album. I, it has the first track is my favorite track by any on any Kiss album. Uh, something went wrong with his hand, so he couldn't do the tour. So they got Bruce Kulick, and then he never, Mark St. John never came back. This guy is his brother, Mike Norton, who kind of looks, you know, like reminiscent of Gene Simmons when he had a really good stylist. Uh, that blonde guy is none other than... Sorry, I can't remember his name. Brian James Fox. He was the drummer in a band called Silent Rage. And I remember that album because it had the torso of somebody, kind of like the second Danzig album or the LL Cool J uh, album, where it's just their chest and they're all ripped and stuff. I thought that was pretty ridiculous that you would have that for your album cover. This guy, whoops, sorry. This guy is his name is David Detano or wait what was that Donato David Donato David Donato did some demos and a couple photo shoots for a little band called Black Sabbath I believe he was in the band right before Glenn Hughes and I think there might be some demos of him doing those songs that Glenn Hughes sang on, but they've never been released as far as I know. This album is kind of 50-50. Uh, there's, there's some good songs that really stand out, like uh, Rock Warriors, Stand and Deliver, Bad Time Coming. Um, Love Hate is one of the the stronger songs on it. But this album has two songs, Runaway and Northern Wind. Those songs are well worth got getting this album for. Uh, David's voice on those songs is just amazing. I just, I love how he sings them. He's got a weird vibrato and kind of a, a little whine to his voice. Uh, this was, of course, the only album they ever did. I had it on cassette, I've had it on vinyl, and now I finally got it on CD. And I think it is still available on CD and easier to find now than it used to be. I think I got this for 10 to $15, whereas before it used to go for about 30 to 40 or 50 uh, all the, all the albums that I've listed here, I will give you links to find them either on Discogs or Amazon. And I hope you check out some of the stuff. Tell me what you like, what you didn't like. If I'm saying the word, um, a little bit too much, or if you just think Angel, Amgel City is an amazing album and I'm totally wrong. So hit those like buttons, give me comments, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.